One of my favourite flat earth debunkers out there is MC Toon. He's just so thorough and has inflicted some very heavy beatings on flat earthers in debates. Well, he is back to cover me again, you'll be pleased to hear, this time breaking down that experiment from Geronism. But before we hear from him, a quick word from today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malwares and phishing attempts and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you like simultaneously. In today's day and age, we spend a huge amount of time on the internet. For me, up to six to eight hours per day. The internet knows a hell of a lot about us, which is why we should care about our online data. Use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel so that no one can see it without your permission, which is really, really good for protecting things like your ID. ID theft is an increasingly common and scary crime. Use Surfshark and its hack lock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Hacklock scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so that they can take action. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshock.deal slash simandan and use my promo code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. Right, on with the show, I bring you MC Toon. Jaron Campanella thinks that the Earth is flat. Well, he says he thinks that, but I have my suspicions. I think Jaron is a grifter that needs to keep up appearances so the money keeps rolling in. You're right. I don't look like Dan. I also don't have Dan's smashing accent. Instead, I have absolutely no accent. Right? Well, I'm MC Toon. You can call me Mike. Dan's on vacation, so NASA called down to Central Casting and asked for the best debunker on the globe. But he was busy, so they asked me. We all know about Bob Nodell and his... A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Dan, this is my video. You get to say thanks, Bob, every week here. Can I get a chance today? Sorry about that. We all know about Bob Nodell and his... A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. And we know how Bob hogs the spotlight for measuring the Earth's rotation and poor Jaron, well, he's always eclipsed by Bob's shadow. But don't forget, Jaron verified the curve of the Earth. Interesting. That's the one, Jaron. Let's listen to Jaron describing his experiment. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the Earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. Interesting. After this experiment, did Jaron come clean and admit that the Earth was a globe? No. He said the experiment was inconclusive and the documentary people were dishonest in the editing and there were weeds in the way and he was absolutely going to redo the experiment and publish the epic flat earth dirt pizza proving results. It's going through weeds. It's hitting weeds. He hitting these weeds was shooting through weeds, right through the weeds. It's been over four years and he has published nothing. Nothing. Did Jaron find a path around the weeds? No. Did Jaron repeat the test somewhere else? No. Did Jaron report his results? No. Of course, the weeds are not a problem. Jaron did see the light from Enrique in his test. The weeds were not in the way. He just didn't like the results. He wants this experiment to just go away. In fact, Jaron has removed all references to this experiment from his channel. There are none to be found on the Globebusters channel either. It looks to me like Jaron is trying to do a little whitewashing. We all know why he never mentioned it again. He did try to redo the test and was not able to force the mandatory flat earth result. But people keep bringing it up to him, as they should. 
He has a weekly call-in show on Wednesdays. Recently, during one of these shows, longtime pro-globe debater Brenda called in and challenged him. Now, Jaron's response was epic, both in how angry he is about his failure at the experiment and in how incredibly hateful he is. Seriously, Jaron, get some counseling. If it's yeah. 17 feet would have been flat earth evidence, 23 feet was curved earth evidence, no. and we got 19 no. and a half right in the middle. No, 23 feet was never. the. That was your prediction. That was you misunderstanding. What do you mean my misunderstanding? That's the math. It's in the f***ing movie, dumb f No, that's your prediction. At 17 feet, if the earth is flat, you should be able to see the light. Correct. And you didn't see the light. Correct. Which right. Is you why saw the light when you raised it above. Yes. 17 feet to 19 feet, which is reasonable for, for an adult to do. Okay. Thus confirming the curvature of the earth. Thank if, you. You're Jaren, so dumb. You're so dumb. Dumb. It we is, were using a tangent line looking through fucking holes, you dumb bitch. It's math that you can do in your fucking head. Hardboard cut out at 17 feet for three miles. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Because, yeah. and if and you, you proved curvature, you're an idiot again. We saw it no, at 19 and a half curvature. feet. So stupid it hurts. I mean, it's just as painful that you just keep saying the same thing and you're dumb as sure. These days, Jaron hides his shame by claiming that the test was inconclusive because the height of the light was wrong. But was it? Let's see what he has to say. If the earth is falling away, then we will not be able to see the light at 17 feet. We would only see it at 23. If the earth is flat, we wouldn't be able to see it at 23. We would only be able to see it at 17. What happened? We saw it at 19 and a half. Hence me saying, interesting, interesting. The holes were all cut at 17. The camera was at 17. The person's light was at 17. Therefore, we should see it if it's a flat earth. We didn't see it at 17. We saw it at 19 and a half when he put it above his head. We did not see it at 23 either. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't. So it was in the middle. But it was in the middle. Too flat. Hence, have... hence, interesting. Jaron would have a point if the globe prediction was 23 feet. But where did this 23 feet prediction come from? It came from Jaron. One thing we know for certain is that flat earthers never get the globe predictions correct, and this is no exception. Do the math. Is 19 and a half closer to 17 or 23? And the answer is 17. Now, I would never claim that because it's not a definitive answer. So the only definitive answers to me would have been 23 and 17. And that's because you have in that distance a six foot drop. Jaron used the famous eight inches per mile squared formula, which is correct for drop from horizontal. Flurfs usually misuse this formula, but in this instance, it is the correct formula. It gives a drop of six feet from Enrique to Jaron, but he missed an important part, the hole in the middle board. There were some eyewitnesses to the experiment, and one in particular describes the setup way better than the documentary does. All the details are on my website at mctoon.net slash interesting. There is only one panel and it was in the middle, one and a half miles from Jaron and the camera. Then Enrique was holding the light three miles away from the camera with no panel. In Jaron's calculations, he figured the drop from Enrique to the camera was six feet. This is correct, except the panel in the middle would be blocking it. Oops. To get the correct line of sight, you need to figure the drop to the lowest point of the light's path through the panel to Jaron. This is the midpoint between Jaron and the panel. That's two and a quarter miles from Enrique, not three miles. The drop is 40.5 inches. Then the light path rises back up to Jaron's camera, applying the formula again to get the rise for three quarters of a mile. That's four and a half inches. The correct drop from Enrique to Jaron is three feet, not six feet. Enrique needs to hold his light at 20 feet above the water, not 23 feet. But that's not it. Eight inches per mile squared assumes that there is no atmosphere, no refraction, but in reality, over three miles, there will be some refraction. At night over land, we can take a conservative amount of refraction, and the eight inches per mile squared formula is corrected to 6.9 inches per mile squared. This makes the correct globe prediction for Jaron's test to be 19 and a half feet. Hey Jaron, how high was Enrique's light? 
We see it at 19 and a half. Be 19 and a half. 19 and a half. 19 and a half feet. 19 and a half. So 19 and a half feet. 19 and a half. Interesting. 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 So, Jaron, your test was conclusive. The flat Earth prediction was 17 feet and it was not seen. The globe prediction was 19 and a half feet and it was seen. That is conclusive. Jaron has a weekly call in show on Wednesdays. I'm certain he will want to hear the good news from everyone calling in to let him know. You can send him to my webpage where all the calculations are. Will Jaron be a real truther as he claims to be and accept this corrected analysis as conclusive evidence for the globe? Or will he deny it because he needs that sweet, sweet grifter money from his faithful flurfy followers? Semi money. Now I know what you're thinking, but I don't think that the Pope will wear the fishnets. Chatbox travels. If the Earth was a globe and you were looking at the North Star, in 12 hours, when the Earth spins 180 degrees, it would be behind you. Boom, got you there. He, he must think the Earth or rotates like this. I, somebody, somebody's got to tell him that's not right. Hey, you can feel Jesus in you, but give an example of quantum equations and theories of and everything. But you can. I meant to say can't. Can cause you can't marry quantum and macro matter. No gravitons non globe. There you go. That's a mic drop. <laughs> Feel Jesus in you. I think there's a double entendre there. Hello, I'm Andrew Pickett and Jeffrey Broad. Why, if the sun is light, does the sun not move at light speed? Question mark. E dot dot dot. Why, if the sun is gas, does not move at the speed of gas? <laughs> no glob can answer this. Will you take the mantle? I'll let my co-host, Dell, take care of this one. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> should definitely keep that door open for fresh air. <sighs> Chatbox Travels is always a fresh breeze of new wisdom. If anyone does call into Jaren, be sure to let me know. You can find me on my channel, Conspiracy Tunes. I'm sure Dan will drop a link in the description so you can subscribe. Or, if you like watching flurfs get flustered in live debates, I debate them every Tuesday on my MC Tune live channel. We'll see you there.